All right, so we are in Texas and we're doing another viewer build. And if you guys don't know what those are, then uh, basically you submit uh, your project ride on our website. And if we're traveling through, you might get a phone call from us and we like to feature your pride and, and joy on the channel. So we're here with Tommy. How's it going? Great. What yeah, do you got? Yeah. So this is a 1956 F100. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've done a full frame off restoration on it. Uh, we did a Crown Vic police interceptor IFS, Coyote, yeah. 6R80, Explorer rear end, nice. Ride Tech. I mean, it's got all the fun stuff. Nice. Now, we had to get this on the channel because we actually built the cousin to this truck in California. We're road tripping this home, and it is shocking how similar they are. Yet one's a, an LS powered Chevy, and one's a Coyote powered Ford. Let's get into it. Here we go. All right, so Tommy, tell me, how, how did you get the track? How, how did this whole thing start? Man, it was a really cool story. Um, I was actually working out of town and I came in on vacation, came to visit Emily and Aaron at Flying Sparks Garage. And um, there was a truck that I had been looking for 56 basically for eight years. And why 56? Um, it's just my favorite body style okay. of that era. Like I had a 54 one time, but it was never a 56. <laughs> so it just, I, I sold it because it just wasn't quite that thing I wanted. And, um, and so I saw this one and it was in the same area. And so we went to visit the guy and we did some negotiating or whatever. And finally he was like, okay, we'll make me an offer. And I, so I said, I honestly, I said, you're gonna get everything you want out of this. I was like, what I wanna do to it, it's not worth my time to, to you know, try to restore it completely. So this is what I would offer. And I get it if you don't wanna accept. And he's like, yeah, I'm a little bit low. And he said, well, um, how about this? And then we were within $180. And he said, how's that for you? I said, well, no, sir. I said, I've already decided that like, if I get this truck, it's gonna be at this price. And if, I, if it's anything different, then I don't need it and that's okay. And he said, you're gonna walk away for $180. Yes, sir. So, well, all right. And uh, so we started to turn around and he goes, well, hang on. <laughs> and, uh, and you know how these deals go, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. exactly what happened. So, so he sold it to me and uh, it had been pulled out of a field about 45 years ago when we started tearing it down in flying sparks garage we found the tag the last time it registered was 1975 which is the year i was born so it was like meant to be nice. so that's crazy because our truck was last registered in 85 and that's aaron's birthday wow <laughs> so like year that he was born too so that's so right incredible. on so so you got it bone stock like nobody touched it it was in line six still it actually had the v8 oh, i mean it okay. was it was a nice truck that's why you know i told ah. the guys like you'll get what you want it was all original it was just missing a driver's door Okay. And uh, I, you know, called a guy I know in Texas, and uh, he said he had a door and went and picked it up, and it it almost matches perfectly. I mean, it was like everything just sort of fell into place. You nice, know? nice. Like one of those things where you just kind of know it's the right thing at the right time. Okay. So you started working on it right away. You had the plan for it. Like, tell us, take us through the process. Um, it took about six months because I was working out of town, and uh, like I said, you know, Emily and Aaron were so gracious to let me keep it there until I had a chance to start Six working. Six months? They kicked us out after three days. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're, we're better friends, obviously. <laughs> Emily's been dying to drive this thing because working in your shop and stuff. So I think she said she wanted to see all the updates. So she's going to take this round. She cruises so great on the highway, dude. So when we started, we literally went full blown. Um, we you know ripped the front suspension out of it, like within a couple of hours. Um, I had pulled a Crown Vic police interceptor IFS off from a junkyard, so I had it ready to go. Um, I mean, it was just like one thing after another. Um, it came together pretty quickly. I think we had it running and driving, right? And I use that term loosely. We had it running and driving in about six months. Nice. And and so Coyote, where'd that come from? 
Uh, it came out with an F-150, uh, 2014, I want to say. Okay, nice. And then 6R80, you said? 6R80. Okay. And then Explorer rear end, um, just because it was cheap and easy to find. Um, okay. uh, within a couple of months, I'm going to do a full four link and notch on it, so okay. I'll be able to have a little bit better suspension on it. But nice. it's pretty good as it is. I've got um, Ritec shock waves on it, so it's air adjustable and has okay. built in bump stops. So it's a really nice, comfortable ride. Nice. When I built it, that was my goal. I, w I wanted to have something that I could get in and daily if I would decide to. Okay, excellent. Uh, how are you getting the 680 to shift? US shift? I've got um, automatic column shift on it, right? Yeah. And then because they came with select shift, I wired up a couple buttons in my ashtray. Oh. And so you can actually put it into manual mode, slide out the ashtray, and there are two buttons that you can shift through the gears. What's controlling that? Still the stock Ford computer? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, okay. so we um, had, it, had, it, had the uh, wiring on it lengthened so we could place it in the cab underneath the seat instead of being yeah. in the engine bay, keep yeah. all of this nice and clean. Yeah, right on. Um, but yeah, so uh, you put it in manual mode and then it's, you know, you shift nice. through the buttons. Nice, right on. Yeah. What brakes? Uh, yeah, so that's actually part of the Crown Vic IFS. You know, that's one of the great okay. things about doing that swap is you get a whole subframe, you get brakes, you get a, you know, really nice anti-sway bar. Right, Just a nice, right. quick drop-in setup. Nice, and the and, uh, distancing was right to fit between the fenders? Yeah, so that's, uh, there's a lot of arguments online about people saying it's too wide, it won't fit, blah, blah, blah. And obviously you can see that it does fit and yep. it's not too wide. The biggest thing is it comes down to wheel preference, right? Yes. If yep. you want 15 inch, it's not going to fit. The brakes are literally too big. If right. you want deep dish, it's not going to work because the track width is you know wider. Right. But as long as you're okay with that offset, it runs and drives fine. Right on. And bang for the buck is hard to beat. Yeah, that's true. So this is kind of cool too. I wanted to make use of the original knobs and make them functional. And so I built in a little switch here, which allows me to raise and lower the front vent cowl. And then another little feature is the uh, throttle button is actually, so with the police interceptor, the rack had variable speed steering. And so it would either increase or decrease the amount of power steering based on how fast you're going. And so I wired up a module and a knob here. So while I'm driving, I can adjust how much power steering assist I have, which is great for being in parking lots and having quick, easy shift, you know, adjustment. Um, but then if you're on the highway and you're at high speed, you can lower that amount of assist. So you've got more road control. Would you change anything? Would you do anything different? Honestly, the only thing that I would change would be the uh, four link and the center dip. Other nice. than that, I've been so happy with the way it runs and drives. I mean, it's just great. It's, it's really nice inside here. Like, I really like it. Like, I'm a bit too tall. I've, I found that with other Fords as well. Yeah. That, um, Another F100, the, the newer style, it was like a 70s. I was also very cramped in there. I do feel I have a little bit more room in the other one, but... Yeah. Some of that has to do with seat placement, too. Uh, I guess your these seats. Ramps, they're a little bit forward. Yeah, and they're a little bit thicker, too, yeah. So, nice. And what's the steering column? Uh, it's just an eBay steering column. Okay, right on. A couple hundred bucks. A couple hundred bucks. Yeah, nice. Yeah. And the dash? Uh, the dash is custom. I actually built a custom dash for it so I could have all my gauges in right there on. because at the time, the Dakota Digital didn't have one that did everything I wanted it to. Now they do, but uh, yeah, when I, when I first set it up, I needed, you know, GPS because I didn't have a speed sensor that I could tap into, yeah. something like that, so. Great, on. Uh, I love it. And then are you doing door panels? Like, did you paint any of this inside? Like, it looks like you painted this. Uh, I did color match and repaint some of the interior because it was really rusty. Okay. And um, I actually got on Facebook Marketplace and found a couple of old couches. Okay. That have similar weather leather. So I'm going to recover it with that. That's awesome. That's <laughs> so cool. Is that the headliner? Yeah, the headliner I got from the 50s is an ABS pop in. Okay. Um, I built my own headliner, okay. but with the Texas heat, it melted. Uh, so I'm like, you know what? I'll just find the ball and pay for this one. Yeah, yeah. No, nice job, man. That's crazy how similar. Got the same strip on the side, on the bottom as ours, like the same kind of contour of the doors. For sure. That's so cool that they're sold the same. Man, yeah. So, 
What do you do for a living? Are you a mechanic? <laughs> I'm not. No, my uh, day job is director of product marketing. Oh, okay. Right yeah. on. You, you, you don't, you wouldn't understand how many people are like IT people that oh, yeah. build cars. Or, no, I'm in IT. No, I build computers. I do this, whatever. So, so you've got some electrical background though, and and. I do, yeah, oh. and I, you know, I, I, I give my family a lot of credit for the mechanical part. You know, when I was a kid, my dad was one of those, like, I'm going to give you a piece of junk for your first car, and yeah. you're going to have to learn how to fix it. And so that's really where I learned a lot of, of my mechanical skills. My grandfather was really great with small engines, and so I kind of had some concepts growing up to, to pull from. But, you know, the great thing about today is that we have YouTube, and we have guys like you guys that are out there really showing us how to do stuff. And so anybody can jump in and start doing things. Yeah, yeah. Now, I think some of your electrical is a little bit higher than what some people <laughs> would do, but <laughs> that's really impressive yeah. stuff underneath the dash. But uh, very cool. So how long have you been driving it? Uh, it's been about three and a half years now. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you were kind of a pioneer in the Coyote Swap. Yeah, when we first started this build, there wasn't a lot of information out there. There, you know, there's a lot of off-the-shelf parts that you can buy for them now, but we didn't have that, so we had to literally custom make, fabricating the uh, motor mounts and you know different ways of getting everything put together. Um, so it's definitely been a challenge, but I could not be happier. I mean, yeah. it runs and drives great. Um, I average about 20 miles a gallon. Nice. I mean, just yeah, it's a delight. Yeah, right on. So you didn't have to cut notch your firewall or anything? You just put it right in place? No. No, no wheelbarrow? Yeah, that was a <laughs> no wheelbarrow. That was one of the things that I was kind of a stickler for. I, there's not a lot of room in the cab anyway. Yeah. And so I wanted to keep it as minimal as possible. And we were able to get the position and the motor mounts to fit just so it just fits in there. Nice. Yeah, you still got lots of room. And then the headers? The headers are off of a Mustang GT. Really? Yeah. I have no issues. It cleared everything. There's no. You don't have to modify them. No. They, nice. Like I said, they just barely fit. I mean, it, we we probably put the engine in and out about five times before yeah. we got everything just right, but we managed to make it fit. Nice. Air conditioning. Air conditioning. Power steering. Power brakes. Nice. Very cool. And then uh, King Ranch rear seats. I recognize these from the F-350. Yeah. So let me tell you the reason it's called Buck 56, right? Okay. That's, that's, that's a nickname. And that's because it's a bucket list build for me. Okay. It's a 56. But if you put it all together, it's like a dollar fifty six, right? Buck fifty six. Because <laughs> yeah. I've been thrifty with everything on this build. Okay. And so the seats are one of those examples. Um, I traded a guy a Roomba <laughs> and two hundred dollars for the set of King Ranch seats. <laughs> nice. And they did they needed a lot of conditioning and everything, but you can see they've they've come back to life and they just fit. Yeah, perfect. That is awesome. <laughs> I see you're exactly like us with the uh, the bed of the box is not not quite done yet. <laughs> You know, I've gone through two different beds in it. I had a plywood bed in it for a while, and that rotted out because I didn't treat it properly. And then I put some strips in, um, but then I completely changed the exhaust. I actually have a Mustang GT full exhaust system in the bed of this truck. Okay. All right. So is, they have the actuators that control it and everything. Yeah. So the cutouts. Yeah. Yep. All all in there. Oh, and, nice. Uh, so yeah, so you know, and I'm about to do a four link in it, so there's right, no reason right. to go ahead and finish the bed. <laughs> Leave it as ah, is. Yes. <laughs> it's dirty enough. It's, it's fine. Dirty. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I love your wood sides. Did you add these? I did. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I was outside. My neighbor was uh, replacing his fence, and he had some scrap wood. I was like, hey, can I have that? And he said, sure. Uh, so, you know. That's beautiful because it's, <laughs> it's nice to take the hood line and then like bring it down into the, into because the bed is so much lower than the hood, right? Thanks, so, yeah. yeah. I kind of thought the same thing. Um, and all of the kits that I saw always were like stake to stake. So yeah. you get this one stretch all the way along it. Yeah. And I was like, how can we do this, but do it a little sportier? So, yeah. yeah. Thank you all. To my knowledge, this is the first aftermarket active exhaust. I built a control module to actually adjust the mod, the uh, actuators based on RPM. Oh, okay. So it's not open or closed. You can you can modulate it to whatever you want. I, I've got three different modes that I set up on it, similar to the Mustangs, um, but I call it Ninja mode for quiet mode. Yeah. And uh, I kept performance, and then I have Karen mode for 
try it, mother. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so there's two actuators? There's full, so full cairn is in front of the mufflers, and then the performance yeah. is just the bypass and the muffler? Um, so full cairn mode actually opens up, those are three inch open yep. dump valves. Yep. And so not only does it go into sport mode on the exhaust, but the full dump valves oh, open okay. up. Okay. So when I go to do a four link, I'm actually using a Mustang rear end because it'll be a center diff. And as you can see, I had just a little bit of contact on my drive shaft from the muffler. Uh, with a center diff, it'll perfectly align. One year apart, so same generation. Um, <laughs> Coyote swap instead of an LS swap. You've got, uh, your bed isn't finished. Um, your wiper motor? <laughs> I mean, my wiper would work fine. I just have to replace the motor. <laughs> So us, us too, we don't have a wiper motor yet. <laughs> we have the motor, just gotta replace it. <laughs> Your mufflers are angled, just like ours, <laughs> for clearance. Your drive shaft is rubbing just a little bit. We got the same mark on our drive shaft, identical mark on the drive shaft where we're heading. It's that's, a love that, that's six, yeah. <laughs> so uh, fuel tank in the back, same style rims and tire, uh, wheels and tires. Um, like I can keep going on and on and on, but I think I think we're uh, I think we need to check the uh, the birth certificates, make sure that we weren't like separated at birth or something. Yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> I think we brothers <laughs> from another mother. Yep, there we go. It's running when you're idling. It's surprisingly quiet, yes. and I've got three inch pipes all the way. Wow. Like I said, it's kind of the perfect combination for what I wanted. It's, uh, it's drivable, streetable, gets loud when I want it to. Yeah. Yeah, the throttle is the same awkward position in my track. It's just like yeah. my wheelbarrow sticks out a bit, so I, I usually drive with my heel. Uh -huh. But I, like, I can feel it after about 10 minutes. It's just, yeah. just the, but that's all just driver preference. Yeah, uh, these cabs were just so short. Yeah. I mean, we're, so, we're used to having long cabs now. Yeah. I was the same way. I had to kind of get used to it. truck all right tommy uh thank you very much for letting me drive and uh i love the build man top to bottom uh and i can't believe how similar they are i want my interior to be like your interior we'll work on that but uh but yeah thanks for showing that too absolutely us. thank you for letting me be a part of this and, awesome uh, let me know when you're ready to trade yeah <laughs> and you know what yeah, we should almost just like you know what for a year let's just trade i got it back in a year like uh, we'll, we'll worry about the border stuff but i would have just as much fun and and it's, it's they're so similar it's unbelievable it's pretty crazy and yeah. such a cool truck um, yeah. i think one thing that i would need for you to do is just to uh paint ford on the tailgate <laughs> We could swap tailgates. I bet they'd fit. Probably. <laughs> All right, if you guys have rides, definitely submit them on thebossgarage.com. There's a viewer build section there. We can, If you can pin your address, then we can, you might get a phone call from us as we travel through. It doesn't matter where, because we're going to start going into other continents and stuff too. So pin it anyway. We want to check out your rides. We want to be able to drive it and motivate you guys to get out there and work on it. Because if you're not filthy, you're not rich. So one more thing, Tommy. Um, what color are you going to paint yours? <laughs> Ha ha ha!